Hi and welcome to my playhouse and the creepy basement. I have a little bit of a project down here that I'm um, about to start working on. So I have one of these, well, this uh, Lenovo Tiny Machine, which is a really awesome little computer. And normally it works on a 19 to 20 volt power brick uh, that powers the machine, gives it power in that way. And does it say, yeah, okay, it actually says 20 volts, 3.25 amps. And uh, yeah, normally, normally you have like a power brick and a um, power supply to do that. But I would really like to see if I can get this to run from like a car battery. So a 12 volt battery or a nice lithium ion 12 volt battery, 12.8 volt battery. I was looking at this thing which I used to use in my robot lawnmower and I just tried to power it up. Let, I'll, I'll show you. So I have uh, the power supply set to 13 volts and yeah when I power this I'll put, put some positive on here and some negative on there. It does show a voltage down here uh, well, it's a little bit forth and back, but it draws an amp up here. So yeah, something is going on and I do believe that I changed this out because this is a DC to DC converter and I do believe I changed it out because it was acting up on me. So that's probably why it was in the broken electric stuff place. It's not supposed to draw an amp with nothing connected to it. Another funny thing was that I had to, um, I, I was touching it and I connected the positive lead and I could feel that it was giving me electric shock. So I had to go up and, and change out my slippers. The ones that I had was, um, well, they, they were a bit wet. <laughs> so yeah, that was a weird one. Um, but I have another one, I'm sure. I think I, I think I have it right there. It looks a little different, but it's a new one. And I to get that out. So I forget what this can do, but I hope that it can do what well. it's similar, isn't it? So it looks very much like this one. Uh, but it looks more powerful. I forget what it can do, but I'm expecting it does just about the same thing. In, out, display, button. Uh, we have a, yeah, they have put a heatsink on top of this coil here. And the capacitors are different. Yeah, never mind, it's about the same thing. So let's see if we can get something out of this that doesn't short circuit the same way. So these little boards can be purchased in China for not a lot of money. Uh, there is no way in heck that it would be possible for me to uh, to buy the parts and and put them together. Really? And let's try that again without the pump. There is no way that I could buy all these parts and put them together on a PCB myself for the amount of money uh, that it costs to get well maybe maybe if I ordered a hundred uh, parts for a hundred of them but I would still have to put all of this together so buying one of these from China is really cheap so I wouldn't bother so but let's power this up and see if we I put some uh, some pieces of metal to it so I think we'll we'll try and give it try and give it 13 volts and see what we can get out of that about 13 volts that's a 13.1 that's a good battery voltage so let's try and connect this still have the plastic oil there and this one is not pulling an amp it's actually not pulling anything at all it's just powered up well 10 milliamps occasionally so that is good and we can press the button right now it says 
of 12.7 is that in or out okay it sees in is amp and out is 12.7 so is this able to do more voltage than ah, too big okay i've been making electronics since i was seven and uh, i think this is one of the the early screwdrivers i have already been able to adjust it from 13.1 up to 14.3 let's see 14.8 15 16 17.5 this press doesn't fit very well in okay 18.4 will it do it 19.5 we're just missing a little bit 19.8 might actually do it oh I didn't turn it 20 volts <laughs> okay so if this extremely cheap piece of electronic will do that 20 volts but firstly we're not gonna trust what they say here so we're gonna measure that let's see plus and minus goes that way do we see 20 volts we do actually 20.02 so uh, it's rather precise 13.1 coming in and 20 coming out awesome so in a previous video I showed that I had gotten some cables here and these are cables for the Lenovo laptops or in this case desktops so the idea is instead of having a power break from each of these I would have one for for a dozen of them I would very much expect that the positive one is the one in the middle and the negative one is the one around them. So uh, we need to figure out how that goes. That's the normal anyway. So we need our multimeter and we need some beep beep beep. I am not sure how much power this supplies yet. So, uh, but let's see. What should we guess? White positive and black. A negative that would be my guess I'm setting it to beep we're gonna test that beep so let's put it on the outside that's the so this is the black one and this is the white one nothing and the black one and then inside oh there is also there's also metal on the inside. I have to be careful about that. On the sides there is metal, so and that should be the white one then. What? I touched it. Eh, come on. Nothing. So maybe the inside is just... Interesting. Okay, so we have this connector for the Lenovo desktop laptop. And the outside here is the black one. The pin in the middle does absolutely nothing. But on the side here, there is metal. That is uh, the positive I'm expecting. I think uh, I was expecting the pin to be positive. So I think I'll go get a uh, power supply and make sure. So here is a 65 watt uh, Lenovo power brick with the right connection, which is right there. Actually pretty much like, like the one that, that has um, come out of here. So. Yeah, I purchased this on AliExpress, the, the cable thing, and they are clearly cables for the power supply. And as this kind of power supply is not as widely used anymore, because 
everybody is changing to USB-C, I'm expecting that they are selling out of their spare parts. So we'll connect this power brick. There, it's powered. So now it's important that I measure power on the right connector. So let's get this into framing again. And then we measure. I'm expecting the outside to be negative and the inside um, to be positive. Oh, and if we measure O, and if we measure voltage, that's a big plus. Yep, and the yeah, the, the spike in the middle does absolutely nothing. That's zero. I do wonder if that's connected. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I was correct. <laughs> that's that's the first. No, it's not. I'm always right. Um the outside is negative and the metal on the inside which is protected behind this uh, yellow stuff is the positive really nicely made how does that work how does that connect to that hmm. okay. we can work with that i need this back i have a laptop that uses that now we have this this is really easy because it already has the connections for one of these so I should be able to connect the negative right in there. Get this up a little bit. Yeah, and we should be able to just pop those in there. Mine is in there and positive in there. <laughs> well, that's an easy fix. There. And then we connect. Oh, I got that. Ah. Okay. Let's see. Minus is that one. Positive is that one. And it stabilizes on 20 volts. We want to make sure of those 20 volts before we do anything stupid. So, there. Always helps. Yep, we still have 20 volts. So we should be able to power this and see how much power it. Um, I forgot to tell you why I'm doing this. A power brick like this takes uh, 230 volts. This one is for 230 volts. Uh, actually, the power brick can go probably all the way from 100 volts. Uh, I can't. F I've just put this on top of it, but uh, yeah, 100 volts to 240 volts, and it will do uh, 20 volts, 3.25 amps. Just what this one needs. But converting power from AC to DC, which this does. It uh, makes those 20 volts out of 230 volts, and there is losses in that. Not uh, mentioning that where I'm going to be using this, I also need to make 230 volts AC out of battery power before converting it back to DC again. So there's a lot of forth and back, and a DC to DC converter, which takes in, well, this takes in 13.1 volts. And I do even believe that I can vary that voltage up there a little bit up and down and it will still maintain 20 volts down here as good as it can. So um, yeah, let's try and connect this and see if we can power that PC. Okay, I have a monitor here. That is power from 230 volts. That's, uh, I'm not messing with that, but I have connected it to the PC over here, which I should just be able to, oh, the lights went out. So it's running, you can see the screen is on and it's drawing 8.38 watts, doing absolutely nothing. 
Oh, except waiting for me to connect the keyboard, which I'm not gonna bother to do because this is plenty fun. So the reason why it wasn't starting up at the, to start with was that I had restricted the amps on the on the power supply, so that it was only supplying like one amp, which it wasn't happy with. So I think maybe we should try and power this from a battery. So finding a battery with a good voltage um, was tricky, but uh, regular viewers of my channel will know that I am a um, rather big Ryobi fan. So I had a battery holder for Ryobi batteries here. So that will supply uh, with a Ryobi battery here, 18 volts. So we'll have 18 volts in and then we'll get 20 volts out. So I think we'll try that to see how that goes. There, 20.3. So that's a little bit more than we needed. So apparently it does not come further down than it than it is. 24 volts is too much. So let's go down to the 20.3 and see if that will do it. It should. I'm sure it's not gonna be that picky, but well, I'm not actually sure, sure, but I would expect it not to be that picky. And don't put it in the USB port one. <laughs> I was hoping to run it off one of these batteries, but there is absolutely no power on those. So, okay, it dropped to 19.5 volts, but it boots. So, yeah. Ryobi to the rescue! Da, da, da. <laughs> Now we don't get a power reading, how much power it's drawing and stuff. So that's um, this one isn't sophisticated enough to do that. It would be nice to have one that could do that. But yeah, we have a uh, have a Lenovo tiny PC running off of a very small battery. It wouldn't be able to do that for for that long. But it is running, so that is kind of cool. I could probably adjust this up now, now it's at 19.6 volts, so apparently the the 20.3 volts that it was doing was because it's not able to step down, so uh, this must be a step up converter, and that seems to add up with the number that I got from the power supply as well. So I think I'll take this success and stop before it starts smoking or anything stupid like that. So uh, yeah, we were able to uh, power a tiny Lenovo PC from a Ryopi battery. And I suspect that any 12 volt battery as we, the power supply, uh, the power supply was running it off 13.1 uh, volts. Getting to 12 volt wouldn't be that big of an issue either. So this was a very fun experiment and will help me when I wanna go and power these tiny Lenovo machines in the data center bunker and then the light goes out um, apparently it doesn't agree but i do believe that we can do that some battery power some solar panels a dc to dc uh, converter thing and then an array or my rack of uh, lenovo tiny servers that is what i'm working towards so if you want to um, see if that ever happens you have to subscribe down there don't you it's very cheap, extremely cheap. You wouldn't believe how cheap a subscription is on this channel. Yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe so that I can see you again, or you can see me again. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.